Since the beginning of um, about 2020, the world is facing a dramatic and uh, influential change due to the pandemic, due to the event of uh, COVID-19. And uh, so far we um, faced this uh, event as a kind of a sanitary crisis, as a medical concern, a medical problem, um, having some impact and some influences on other realms of society, but without really reflecting on what is the structural change that the pandemic implies. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Corona is an invitation for our society, for our world, to rethink certain models, to rethink certain systems, to rethink certain ways of thinking. That's a vision, that's one point of view, considering Corona as a kind of worldwide um, reflection unit, as, as a re worldwide reflection machine, uh, in order to generate new perspectives on ecology, on economy, on politics, on well-being, on uh, psychological well-being, on let's say the notion of values, and then I don't only speak in terms of commodities, but also in terms of the values of what um, people and, and how people contribute to society. And then of course, as I'm running, as I'm a, a director of a museum for contemporary art, I'm also wondering what could be the effects, what could be the, um, the consequences of a pandemic for the art world and for you know, artists and art institutions. It's, you know, when you're in the middle of something, we are in the middle of a crisis, it's always very difficult to figure out what are the, the effects of a crisis. It's normal and it's human and it's kind of pretty, um, you know, contemporary in one way or another. You know, in the world of Instagram and social media, we're like always in the immediate and in the next moment, in the next day, in the next event, the next uh, thing to watch, the next thing to be seen. Um, and of course, also in the art world, we do see that this kind of, um, you know, infodemic hysteria in terms of um, these artists that have been promoted is very present. So it's also there that we are like being, um, you know, that we have to take a certain responsibility and a certain, you know, perspective to the future. Let me divide um, three perspectives, or let me bring up three perspectives. Let me bring up the perspective of the artist. Let me secondly bring up the perspective of the institution. And let me thirdly bring up the perspective of the public um, and let's say like a public in, in uh, you know, in an as wide, um, a wide scope to look at the public from, let's say, people who are like dedicated to contemporary art, to people who collect contemporary art, but also people who are just like by accident um, getting in contact with, with what contemporary art could be. The museum, the institution. Um, if I speak for SMAC, for the Museum of Contemporary Art in Ghent, Belgium, the museum that I'm running, um, we have to say that this lockdown, this closing down, I think 2020 has been a year where um, you know, about half of the year we couldn't share our exhibition with the public. Um, it has been a year in which um, most of the exhibitions that we have been scheduling have been postponed. It has been a year that all the activities that we develop towards like different target groups to youngsters, to children, to elderly people, to people with um, dementia and so on and so on have, to, have, to, have been cancelled. It's a year, 2020, in which suddenly the museum became a kind of introvert apparatus, not a kind of extrovert machinery who tries to touch base with the world around um, himself in the classical sense. Um, a kind of um, introvert machinery suddenly, which tries to figure out a new way how to deal and how to cope with publics. But the good news, let's start with the good news, with the, with the positive thing, which reminds me on the beautiful quote of um, George Bernard Shaw, that society is always full of optimists and pessimists, but that the optimists are the one who invented the airplane and the pessimists the parachute. I think the people in SMAC and we as a museum, um, we are the inventors of the airplane. We consider ourselves to be on the optimist side, on the side that we consider Corona as a kind of, you know, a tool full of opportunities a way how to outreach differently to the public. For instance, a very small little example, um, during the um, first lockdown, we started to send out a um, newsletter and a kind of, uh, you know, some information on the website, whereby we made an invitation to our public and to the general public to send drawings on an A4 pa paper to the museum, drawings that may people make in the lockdown, make in their quarantine, drawings that which could be like a kind of a relief, like a kind of opportunity for people to distract, to think differently. 
Um, this event has been very successful, even if I consider an, uh, you know, an amount of 10 drawings as a successful event. We saw that up to 500 people have been sending in drawings, which we turned into an exhibition and we turned into a book. But why do I give this example? Because I think, I think that this example of um, these lockdown drawings, of going back to the essence, to going back to the essence of making a drawing and using a pencil to leave a trace on a white piece of paper, the same attitude we should apply as an institution towards uh, Corona, towards COVID-19. We should not try, once there is a vaccine, or once there we come to a kind of a more normal situation, we should not try to go back to the situation before um, the, the Corona pandemic happened. We should try to figure out, like looking at the white sheet of paper, how can the museum reinvent itself in relation to the new conditions, in relation to the new um, working space, in, to, together in concern, in relation to the new exhibition space that the museum has become. One clear thing is that, you know, all the digital um, uh, applications, all the digital viewing rooms, all, you know, the dig digital tools, how to show exhibitions or how to share artworks, this will never be a kind of 100% uh, valid alternative uh, for, uh, for the exhibitions that you can see in real time, face-to-face uh, -face in the museum. I think that at this moment, a corona for an institution, for a museum, opens up a kind of opportunity in order to figure out what does the digital really mean for the museum. Is the digital not more than just a kind of analog tool where you show like exhibitions and so on and so on? Is the digital, the social media, all the um, elements that you have in this kind of um, surrounding, is this not a kind of opportunity in order to reflect differently on the notion of information, on the notion of what an image means, on the notion how to share a collection with a larger public? Because Corona is not only a pandemic, Corona is also an infodemic. Corona is also a moment in which that we saw that every museum, every place, wherever in the world, every single gallery, every single institution suddenly started to, t to try to work in another modus and to send information to the whole world. Something which is necessary, something which is valid, but of which I think that these two lockdowns generate a prototype a prototype that can be further developed into a kind of valid, you know, institutional framework in the near future uh, when we will have to deal with more and other kind of uh, pandemias. Eh? Um, even that is a kind of a voice of an optimist. Because according to me, um, Corona brings us to three new values, three new core values in society. Um, and these are for me the notion of fragility, the notion of doubt and the notion of generosity. Eh? And this under the total umbrella of solidarity. I think Corona has been an invitation also for us as a museum sector to figure out a new form of solidarity, to try to forget our territoria, to try to forget our kind of narrow-minded, limited way of approaching things, to try to open up to as much, um, as much, um, you know, as much people um, as possible. And I then, I, when I say this, I'm not thinking in terms of quantity, I'm not thinking in terms of numbers, but I'm thinking that um, in a sense, the, the, the quantitative regime um, in which our society is, uh, is like bathing, uh, also the quantitative regime, uh, at, uh, um, like how museums are looked at, that it's now the moment, once and forever, to turn it into a kind of qualitative, unique perspective. Secondly, um, I was saying that next to the institutions, the museums, the Kunsthalas and, and so more, I wanted to reflect a little bit on the notion of the um, artist. Um, the artist um, is the core of the museum, the art is the core of all our activities. But let me for one moment expand um, our notion of the artist and not limit it to the visual artist, but let's try to expand this to artists in general. Let's try to expand this to musicians, to choreographers, to actors, to performers, to dancers, to, you know, to writers, to uh, stand-up comedians, to you know, everyone who in one or another form deals with creativity and deals in a professional way with creativity and thinks that he or she has a voice to put into the world. Artists suffer, I think, in terms of Corona. Artists, you know, I think even artists in the performing art more than, than visual artists, but artists suffer because I want to get rid of one myth, of one kind of classical legend that, uh, a kind of exotic legend, that the confinement, the isolation, uh, you know, the, 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 the solitude, the, the, the idea of being all, all by yourself, 
that it is the best condition for artists to make art. That's a romantic, uh, horrid view that we, we, we inherited it from the 19th century. That's a horrid view that also is being brought up in many Hollywoodian films when they stage an artist or an artist's career. That's a kind of, you know, very trivial form of romanticism which will not serve us at this moment. Artists, I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure there are some artists who are blessed by the confinement and who really love to work in the confinement and for whom Corona didn't mean a big change. But I think the majority of artists are also people who like to communicate, who like to share things, who like to review things with their peers, who like to go into a dialogue with their surroundings, who like to show the things that they have been working on, who like to show their fragility and their hesitations. And for this, this you can only do when you're part of a social structure, when you're part of a kind of social event, when you're part of a social environment. And the corona confinement gives a window through the computer and through you know, the digital uh, possibilities, gives a window to communicate with the others. But there is nothing, you know, mo nothing more real than the real thing. Nothing more real than speaking live to someone, nothing more real than t holding someone's hand, than holding a drawing in your hand, than the touch of life, than the touch of everyday life. So I feel along with the artists. I'm, I'm really empathic with the artists. I'm worried, I'm concerned because not all the artists in the world have the luck to, um, to be well-selling artists. Not all artists have the luck to you know, have a kind of um, comfortable, uh, good background in order to make their living possible. So I think also here that um, wherever we are and wherever which country we are, um, that it's the role of our society and of um, uh, civilians in order to generate uh, frameworks, in order to generate possibilities um, so that artists can make um, or can raise and perform their, their sense of liberty and their sense of uh, critical liberty um, at the utmost. Thirdly, the public. And the, also, in relation to the public, there are many misunderstandings. You know, there is not one public, there are not two publics, there are like a multitude of public. Maybe we should even be more interested in the public who is not visiting institutions. Maybe we should pay more attention to the public who is not going to a concert. Maybe we should try to understand what being public means instead of looking at public. Being public, again, is something which we should do as a society in order to fulfill this kind of dream I have in terms of solidarity, a dream I have in terms of generosity and dreams I have in terms of you know, the values I was, I was bringing up um, earlier um, in this uh, little talk. Um, but public also in the terms of rendering something accessible. You know, art um, and culture in society is not something which should be a kind of, uh, you know, an added value, so a nice to have. Uh, it's not something kind of decorative, something that, uh, you know, sh should be there for the, the happy few. It should be there for the happy happy. It should be there for the happy multifold. It should be there for as much people as possible. And I think the lack of, of uh, access to culture um, is even more sent felt not only by, for those people who normally already have the access to culture and to art, but has, uh, has, has been felt much more also in relation to those people for whom this access is not evident, is not like a kind of logical thing. And so also there, you know, I think that Corona, COVID-19 is an opportunity, is a chance in order to, to rethink, to reflect on another way what, me, what it means to generate a public, what it means to be a public, to be someone who participates in art, who, who consumes art, who participates in what the art world is. And I think that the answer um, is, um, lies in the, um, in the heart of, of uh, the things that come together. I think the answer is that these three categories, which I've been like clearly separating in the things I've been saying, that there should be one thing, one cluster, one element, you know? The public should not be divided from the artists and the artists not from the institutions and the institutions not from the public and the other way around. It's a kind of ecosystem. It's one thing where the one needs the other, you know? There is no museum with artists. There is no museum without the public. But the public also do the other two categories and also the artists. So this is a, is a call. This is a kind of manifest uh, cry, with an, a manifest optimist cry um, in order to make sure that uh, Corona is understood as an invitation to think, to think optimistically and to, to make a future which is even more beautiful than the past was. It's nice to be invited to participate to a very interesting celebration 
of the human rights, a very important aspect of humanism, the uh, human rights. And, and indeed, there is a big relationship between the arts and uh, the human rights. Um, and both are really uh, involved with humankind uh, and they are putting questions about certain problems and they have a very ethical, an ethical, uh, let's say, perspective, um, an ethical questioning. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. The real nature of art experience is the close proximity uh, to be, uh, to have your senses and to see it, uh, to see it in a space, a spatial experience uh, with objects, with material aspects. Uh, to make a film of it, it's not enough. Um, I understand that very well. Um, but I like air, come like air, like the French are telling, um, it's like that. So we have to change it and to to make the good thing of it, huh? to to have some opportunity of that problem. I'm sure that just artists have to be innovative enough to just to to make something new with that circumstance. It's important to make the difference between reproduction and production. I think all the alternatives of uh, the proximity, uh, the, the physical distance, uh, problematic. Uh, all the alternatives uh, have to be a new production, not a reproduction, but a production. Uh, it is uh, uh, not so good. Uh, it's very good uh, that artists are taking the, uh, let's say, our, the artists are really um, deciding how to make it again. It's a kind of, of, of importance that the artists make a new art work uh, with the distance uh, situation. Uh, 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 because the experience of art is not so absolute like the phenologist were saying uh, one year, uh, 100 years ago. Uh, the idea of a subject that is so directly going in in the object, uh, it's not so easy. Uh, and for that just, uh, it is a real educational wealth to have that problem uh, with that uh, distance, physical distance uh, situation. Eh? I think uh, there, is no, there is no evolution in art. Eh? The art history is not a history of going from good to better to better to better. I don't think it's like that. There's no progress in art. Eh? Eh? Since modern art and maybe the whole history of art is more a revolution, not an evolution, but a revolution. Eh? That is important, the idea of reversal, uh, to think again, to rethink, to remake, uh, uh, to, to, to actualize, uh, to articulate, like the postmodernist were calling it. Uh, it's very, very important, uh, very important. Uh, because the importance is not the medium. Uh, the message is not the medium like in communication science. Uh, it's the creativity that is important, eh? the creativity that is responsible for the possibility of making new forms. Eh? And I think eh, the video eh, in this circumstances of physical distance can be a new challenge. Eh? A challenge for video art, but also a challenge for art and for society in general, I think. Eh? artist is no longer a kind of outsider eh, who is out of the society, looking to the society, criticizing the society, giving utopic uh, new solutions, eh, uh, fictive uh, utopic uh, uh, new solutions. No, no. Uh, more and more uh, the artist will have a very important function in society eh, as someone who is thinking, uh, who is showing us, who is making forms for reflection and who is giving us uh, new solutions, uh, seen from another point of view, and uh, new solutions uh, for uh, the future.
cannot stop thinking uh, what I was doing uh, in the same period last year when yeah it was uh, uh, everything was so different I was very busy uh, traveling and uh, exhibiting internationally only in Belgium <coughs> I was in October November in uh, for uh, events in the frame of Europalia and uh, this year since March everything slowed down and uh, somehow moved suddenly uh, online which was yeah new for for the teachers and also for the students although all of us were accustomed with uh, yeah we work uh, a lot on on exchange on internet but not so much on this uh, 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 communication platforms uh, and uh, there are some good things and some yeah bad things i mean the good thing is that uh, uh, somehow he, at least with those students who who uh, uh, have their monitors open and you can see them and you see them names it's easier to to uh, have the feeling that you are closer to them and uh, you can uh, interact easier and uh, uh, I think some of the students like this but uh, 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 but yeah many of them would and uh, would prefer to to have uh, direct uh, meetings and uh, which I think it's normal in a way. You know, it, it's it's difficult to to replace the face-to-face -face, uh, uh, communication with uh, one media by a technology. I think the the main thing is to to, to be uh, to be interactive. I mean, this is the uh, my my conclusion after yeah more than one and a half semesters spent online uh, I think uh, uh, yeah my way of uh, preparing the course and of uh, yeah so structuring the, the all the, the, the materials is to to provide as uh, much interactivity as possible and also uh, this uh, this is the the main advantage of uh, this kind of courses compared with uh, with uh, tutorials and other pre-recorded uh, online courses which are uh, uh, their which uh, their numbers increased uh, incredible on uh, on internet so the students if they uh, have to choose uh, between different options they they it's clear that they are uh, interested to to choose something which uh, allow them to put questions and to uh, be as close as possible with uh, tutor with uh, the teacher but um, at the same time there is also a problem which is discussed in in this uh, academic uh, uh, network that there is no also the technology is quite at the beginning and it is uh, very i would dare to say primitive now in in i'm sure that in some years we look back uh, uh, and we'll laugh and how primitive those platforms uh, were and uh, uh, i think is that they are not fixed rules on behavior on on internet in general and on all this these uh, platforms in in special so yeah it's uh, we have to i think this is a kind of uh, a set of rules uh, on how to behave how to have uh, the monitor open have to yeah to be 
uh, be give the the feeling as much as possible that the communication it's uh, is normal and you are close and face to face with somebody.